There's an ice cream van driving around somewhere outside, so if you can hear that, you're not going nuts. There's somebody legitimately trying to sell ice cream in what is almost becoming the snow. So, don't ask me how that works, but never mind. <laughs> And hello there and welcome back to another Wi-Fi Sheep Tech video with me Tom. Right, uh, Sunday afternoon and I want to have a look at the Acorn Electron, which is part of my collection. Now, those of you that follow the channel will know that uh, we've seen the Acorn Electron before. We used it to test the cub monitor when we were working with that. But it's been a bit sort of neglected. It works as a machine, had a few repairs, but it works. Um, but it's been neglected, it's not been a sort of major focus. I'd kind of like to change that, so I thought get out today, have a play, see what we can do. So the Acorn Electron itself is a basically a cut down BBC Micro. It dates from 1983 and it was a, a BBC Micro cut down in size and also cost to compete with the ZX Spectrum. So it's actually missing a lot of functions and features that a full blown BBC Micro would have. However, it still uses the same Moz Technologies 6502 processor and it still has the 32K of RAM on board. Now what I want to do is to try and plug this into this little uh, Maxim black and white portable television set, portable CRT. You could get these around the mid to late 90s, early 2000s. I think we bought that one, or well, parents bought that for a camping trip. You put all the batteries in, uh, run the CLT, it runs about half an hour on the CLT, but it drains all the batteries and yeah. But it also had a radio which lasted a lot longer. So this set's been sitting around out of use in the garage and all sorts for best part of probably 15 years now. Uh, I thought it might be quite useful to have to see what we can, uh, if we can get it to plug into uh, the vintage kit. It looks quite cool and I think the idea of having a little black and white CRT with a sort of period computer, I think it'll look quite good and I can take that out to shows, saves me on to lug around the uh, heavier CRT monitors, etc. So we'll see how we go with that. Um, so yeah, let's just go for a few features of the Acorn Electron. Okay, so connectivity. Well, most of the major ports are on the side of the machine. I'll just lift that up. There we go. So it basically consists of two DIN sockets and two RCA phono ports. I'm just going to take a cable out, power cable out the other side so I don't damage it. There we go. Uh, if we look underneath, if you can see that, it's actually marked what they are. That is upside down. Basically, it's cassette, cassette interface, VGA, video, and UHF, which is the analog TV interface. So both the composite and the UHF use RCA type phono jacks. And then we have a DIN socket for video. And then we have, which is a six pin DIN. Then we have a larger, I forget how many pins the uh, cassette DIN is, for the uh, cassette interface. On the back of the machine is an expansion port interface. And you could actually have multiple units that would clip into the back of the computer to give you things like disk interfaces, cartridge slots. All that's missing on the Electron, so you're actually quite limited on this, the stock machine, how you're going to get data in or out. Okay, so turning our attention to the back of the CRT, um, this one only has external aerial port, which is not a standard, and uh, voltage, 12 volts DC in. Luckily, I managed to find a power transformer that did actually work. So, which is this one, which actually does power up quite happily. It is important if you're not using the proper power shot somewhere for the device that it is going to be compatible. You don't want to be blowing stuff up or putting too much strain on the uh, power shot somewhere. Right, the connectivity was a bit of a problem, um, how to get these two to talk. And what I actually found was I needed a jack, which is a non-standard type jack system and I found this audio cable which is a stereo standard headphone stereo uh, jack on this end which actually fitted like so and then it actually has splits into two left and right channel RCA's 
and luckily one of those channels will actually fit inside the equal electron. So I remember correctly, it's the white and it wants to go into there. And that will actually use the RF modulator built inside the electron to generate a UHF PAL 625 line broadcast, structural broadcast feed, which we can then pick up using the analog tuner in the telly. Nowadays, that's not really the best way of getting a good picture, but I think for this it'll work fine. Is the RF uh, modulator on this electron is actually in quite good nick and is tuned properly, and the CRT itself has actually had very, very low tube hours. And because it's such a small um, CRT, hopefully this will work quite well. Okay, so monitors plugged in. I just put the power cord in for the electron, which came with a standalone external power adapter so it doesn't have to carry the uh, power supply on board the machine unlike the BBC Micro hence we don't have the capacitor issue of things blowing up in the power supplies which does technically make these machines possibly a little bit more reliable in their old age only just now just like the uh, ZX Spectrums at the time there's no on off power switch with an electron so basically I'm going to go over to the mains on the extension cord just the other side of the room and power up Hear a beep. And CRT is just warming up, so let's see if we can tune the CRT in. Oh, there we go. Okay, I've just had to turn the uh, contrast and brightness down on the CRT. It has little uh, adjustments on the back doing that, just so you can actually see on the camera the display. Luckily, uh, we haven't got any sort of horrible strobing which you usually get on CRTs when shooting off displays. So hopefully you can see that all right. Um, it's really, really dim now, the CRT, uh, to me, because I've had to turn it right down, but the camera's picking it up really nicely. So so there we have the standard boot, Acorn Electron, and it loads BBC Basic, so it has the full-blown uh, BBC Basic shared with the BBC Micros, which does technically mean most of the software would be directly compatible. Just drink my tea. I go uh, CLS, that will clear the screen, like so. We've got the prompt, waiting for a basic command. I think we have got some, got some system commands, I'm trying to think now. Asterisk help, gives you an OS number, so this is OS 1.0. Um, I don't think it does any ROM, there shouldn't be any ROMs in the system, no. Uh, no ROMs in the system. Um, I think we can call basic again. We're already in basic, but yeah, we can call basic. That's pretty much it. There's not an awful lot on board the system at all. It it supports most of these micro modes. So example mode two will give you the mode two system. I can say color one, which you're not going to see red in black or white. Color two, three. Oh, you can see three. I think if I was able to turn up the uh, contrast a little bit, you'd see a few more colours than that. But uh, well, grayscale anyway. But overall, that's working quite well. One of the things that's really put me off wanting to deal with the Acorn Electron is the difficulty of getting any software into it. Um, because as we've already mentioned, it doesn't have a direct disk interface. You can get attachments, and you can actually get a disk drive for it. But I don't have any of that, and that that equipment goes quite expensive on eBay now, and I'm not not a huge fan. There's a fan base of these machines, by the way. There's a whole sort of community that sort of love their Acorn Electrons. For me, it's a sort of it's a passing interest. It's part of the whole Acorn story. It's sort of part of the BBC Micro story, so it's worth having one. They're quite a nice, small, compact machine, um, but I'm not going to go nuts on buying extras for it. So how am I going to run any software? I've never run any, other than some very simple basic programs I've typed in myself, I've never run any commercial games or applications on this system until now. I mentioned before that the Electron has a tape interface as standard. It happens that I do have this jump of cables just off camera in the corner. I'll show you this, there we go. It is a DIN to freeway mono audio setup to use a special tape deck systems designed for computers. 
It also happens that I do have two tape deck tape decks here. I'll show you the first one. This is one for a BBC Micro. It should technically be compatible, but it only has, I'll show you that, a DIN and earphone. And I don't have the DIN to DIN video uh, video audio cable required. So and also I don't know if this works. I do however have a second one which is a Ferguson branded unit. Can you see that? Yeah, better that way. And this unit does have, as well as DIN, has the three sockets required, which is a mic, mic, ear, and then we have the remote unit here. So I'm hoping that we might be able to use this, get this up and running again, and then actually play tape data into the Acorn Electron. Okay, so the Acorn Electron has now been joined by a more modern MacBook Pro machine. The reason for this is that this MacBook Pro, which is my normal work machine, I've got some WAV files, which are audio files, which are rather interesting. Take a listen. What that is, is that's computer data that would have been in audio form on original cassette tapes for the Acorn Electron. So what I'm thinking is, if I plug the tape interface from the Electron straight into the audio out or headphone out of the MacBook, can I simply stream the files or the data straight from one to the other? I think this will work. Okay, so let's just see if this does work. So I'll plug DIN into cassette interface. Just that one there. And I think it's, this is always a bit confusing me. Is it mic or is it ear? There's two here, mic or ear. We don't need the remote cable because we won't be using it. It's one of these two. Microphone or ear? I think it's here. I'm sure it's here for listening. So plug here into the headphone out, like so. Uh, let's try, we'll try Hopper. And I'll just open that up in the QuickTime player so we have a little bit more control. Might just turn the volume down a little bit. Okay, so because I don't know what the um, command is to low, let's just see on the electric. We ask it to cat, and then I press play. Oh, there we go. Did that pop up this there, Hopper? Okay, I do seem to be struggling slightly to get a uh, reasonable image on the CRT. The camera can pick up, but it's just finished streaming the file, uh, so it has found it, Hopper. So I'll say, uh, let's just break that then. So we'll break. So if I now say, oops, can't spell chain right. Chain and hopper. Searching on the map book, just over here, I'll put the file back to the beginning and start playing. Now you see it's now saying loading, hopper, and it's going to count it in. There we go. Still loading the rest of the data, and there's a very small panel down here which just says loading. I don't know if you can see that on here, it's just here. We've got to the splash screen. And just remember, all this is, is WAV files being played via QuickTime off a MacBook through the headphone out and straight into the Acorn Electron's cassette interface. There we go, I think we've actually loaded in. It was just under two minutes to load. So Z. Let's have a look then. Right, I'm not seeing anything. Probably because I've got it turned down, so let's hang on a moment. Okay, so I've now fixed the issue. I just had the um, contrast and brightness turned down too much for the camera. So you see it's a bit glary uh, as you look at it, but we can actually now see what we're doing.
Oh, Lincolnshire poacher. Anyone who likes their number stations will know all about that. Really not good at games. But anyway, so that works. Uh, what else can we play? Let's have a look at something else. Let's hit break. So we load something else in. Okay, so this is Meteors. Quite a classic uh, game. Again, we'll just cat on the system to catalogue so we know where the file is we're trying to boot. I'm just going to play the file through now. Meteors. So, okay, that's great. That's probably all we need to know. I'll just escape there. So if we now type... Chain and meteors. Ask it to start searching. Put the file back to the beginning. Play the new data in. There we go. Meteors loading. Okay, we've now got the splash screen loaded, and as before. It's now loading in the content. The tape is still, or the virtual tape is still streaming from the MacBook. So the audio is still coming in. The computer is just listening to the data as it comes in. idea of that. Okay so we're just loading in Elite now which is going to take a full part of 10 minutes to actually load up. We got to the splash screen it looks pretty cool but uh, you'd need a lot of patience to do this day in day out as you would have done in 1983. Okay I'll be the um, first to admit that's not the fastest version of Elite I've ever seen. That is slow. Oh dear that's about two three frames a second. Um, yeah, let's see if we can actually get this thing uh, flying, see what the gameplay is actually like. Uh, uh, find my function key on this. F1, and we are flying. There's a lot of slowdown on the screen, I think you can see. There is my space station. I don't think this is going to work. Oh, we might make it. No, uh, no we didn't make it. Oh well, there you go. God, a frame rate on that is appalling. <laughs> it was slow on the uh, BBC Model B. But the Electron version is just... Look how long it takes to draw. Oh dear. Oh well, that was fun. <laughs> and there we go, so there's a brief overview and review of the Acorn Electron. I do think that we need to explore more of this. The machine needs to repair, it needs to clean, and also I'd really like to get one of these tape decks running and actually get some software on cassette tape and then catch load off authentic uh, media. So I think a part two is in the works for this. But for now, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe us right here on Wi-Fi Sheep, and we'll see you real soon. Bye for now.